yeah, 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 yeah. So my name is Glenn McGaldrick um, and basically I'm the creative director of Men's Spire Ireland. So uh, basically you know, about five, six years ago I moved over to the UK um, to work for Men's Spire. And at the time obviously Men's Spire was, was starting to sort of build its reputation across the UK and Ireland and stuff like that. So I wanted to go there and basically just, you know, learn how to become, you know, a, a, a stylist and, um, you know, in you know the, the 21st century yeah. you know like and, and move away from the sort of you know traditional trade of the industry and that was it man and sort of while i was there built a very strong relationship with with uh, you know samuel palmer and josh the monica who are the founders of the brand and luckily while i was there um you know got, got offered a partnership to come back and take take men's back to ireland so That's a great question, man. Um, to be honest, like, you know, this goes way back to even when I was in school because I wasn't necessarily academic, you know, I didn't really do well in subjects like maths and, and you know, just it just wasn't my thing. And not, not that I was a bad student, but it just didn't appeal to me and I knew that wasn't my strong point necessarily. I knew I was more practical, I was always better with my hands, you know, better creatively and stuff like that. So when I left school, um, I actually, really badly uh, you know I actually made a pretty pretty big mistake and basically didn't didn't get any of my college courses that were on the the CAO form which is obviously what we use in Ireland for getting into college and uh, yeah basically all of the courses I put on that were far too high for the, the points I'd gotten so I was left in the in, in, in the in the shit really, yeah so uh, then I needed something you know I had to start looking elsewhere and at that point I'd already started to sort of take a keen interest in barber because you know on social media like Instagram I was starting to follow barbers from outside of Ireland just to actually be able to get a better haircut myself not even potentially to get into hair but just to you know bring a, a photo to my barber and say is there any chance I can get this then it started to occur to me that the industry was actually starting to evolve so um, I knew that for me it would sort of fulfill that creative practical side that I had initially. Like for me I could never sit behind a computer, like it just really genuinely just, just bored me if I'm being completely honest. For other people it's great and it suits them but for me I needed to be doing something where I was busy and occupied all day and that fulfilled that and then you know from, from the other perspective outside of creative cutting, you know barbering in itself is a very good business for people that have that entrepreneurial sort of ambition because not only are you cutting hair all day but you know people overlook you know the client building aspect of that you know which is huge you know being able to build a large clientele retain a large clientele that in itself is like running a small business you know um, if you look at it that way so for me it's always been about fulfilling the sort of creative aspect but at the same time you know, getting some sort of entrepreneurial buzz from it as well has been huge for me, man. <laughs> so we're actually in the brand new Men's Bar Academy in Ireland, uh, in Fibsborough in Dublin. And, you know, again, even outside of that original question about what I enjoy about cutting hair, one of the big things that occurred to me early on was teaching. Um, you know, it wasn't something that, I, that I, I won't lie and say that it was something that I thought I would enjoy. I, I, I never seen myself as a teacher or an educator prior to getting into barbering. It was something that I stumbled into because when I came to Men's Bar, education was huge. It was, you know, at the forefront of the brand. It was something that, you know, Men's Bar's culture revol like revolves around the development of staff, you know, uh, you know, on courses. And it's huge, it's a big part of the company. And I sort of fell into that. And, you started to find a real love in, you know, just mentoring people. Like, you know, it, it's, a, it's a hard feeling to describe when you take somebody, you know, from a position where they can't cohere to a position where they are now a fully fledged stylist. Like, you know, that for me, for some reason, it just really started to become appealing to me. So, you know, from, from 
you know, two of my biggest goals early on when I went to Mentor was to bring a salon and bring the company to Ireland and also open my own academy. <coughs> um, and, you know, luckily, we've, we've just managed to, to do that. So. Man, this is crucial. And th look, this is one of the big things that clients, unfortunately, don't understand. There's, there's still a large, you know, percentage of, of clients and lads that buy their product, you know, uh, when they go shopping to do their weekly shopping for food. Yeah, you know, they'll pick up a random product off the shelf and just buy it with no real understanding of whether or not that product is going to benefit their hair, benefit the style that the hair has been worn in, now, whether or not the product is even healthy or good for their hair. I think, you know, a big thing is that there's actually a lack of understanding of products from the average buyer. Yeah? Um, you know, obviously there is a lot of people out there who are really, you know, attentive with their hair. And, you know, they will look for that information. But there's still a large percentage of people, man, that just majority that, that don't understand it. You know, the, 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 the educational aspect just isn't there. So, um, you know, in companies like ourselves, like Blue Man, who are really pushing education on products, it's essential. Like, um, you know, it makes a client's life easier at, at, at the end of the day. What advice would you give to someone who wants to get into the industry? That's a good question. Um, I'd say, from my own personal experience, yeah, would be to do things right from the get go. Yeah, um, look. When you look at barbering as an industry, yeah, you need to look at it as if any other industry or job. Right? There's very few jobs or industries that you can get into nowadays without paying for a college education. Yeah, um, which you know in Ireland, somewhere between four and five thousand a year. If I'm right, I don't know whether it's a little bit more, a little bit less. So you know, you can imagine by the end of a three to four year course, you know. You're probably looking to invest between 10, 15,000 euros in your education. That's for most, you know, careers. So, for some reason, in barbering, we still think that for 1,500 or, or 2,000 euros, we can become a fully fledged, qualified stylist, which it just isn't possible to, to be quite frank in 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 these uh, days. My mom always said to me, you buy cheap, you buy twice. And I stand by that to this day. If you buy something for a knockoff price, you're gonna have to buy it again. And the simple fact of the matter is that the way the industry has become in 2020, you need to look at it like any other career or job. It's something that you're gonna do for the rest of your life. So invest in it correctly from step one. Don't try and beat around the bush. Find a professional education company that will give you the correct start to your career on a full-time basis this isn't something that you can do part-time.